I'm going to show you two king and pawn endgames. One played in the Chessball Masters about three weeks ago, and another very similar endgame played in round three of the Sinkfield Cup just last night. Sinkfield Cup currently taking place in St. Louis, and there are already some amazing games there. But and uh, yeah, I'm going to show show you one of them anyway. Here's the prelude. Here's the backstory to the Sinkfield Cup game. So this is Levon Aronian against Lei Quang Liem from the Chessable Masters, played just well. Let me see. About two weeks ago. Aronian here with the white pieces, you can see he is a pawn up. There's four pawns here against three. Extra pawn. Here Aronian made a terrible mistake and only drew the game. So let me show you what happened in the game. He played g4 check. And now king e5 would actually lose, but Lei plays uh, as would king f6, but he played king g6, the only move to draw. So if king e4, then king f6 and black holds firm, there is no breakthrough here. Um, Aronian danced around and tried to get black to play the king to f6, as we'll see that is a mistake. Here, you have, of course, white threatens king f5, and then you have to play king f6. And the only way for white to try to break through is to play c5, but that gets taken, and of course, d6, that can be collected, and black is absolutely fine. Well, black is actually winning there. So, bear that position in mind. That's very important. Here, it is white to play. If it's black to play, that's another story. So, let's go back to this position. That's a draw with white play. So in this position, g4 check is the mistake. Instead, Aronian should play king e3. Now, if king e5, then we play g4. The king steps back to f6, and now king e4 and it is that position we mentioned earlier, but this time it is black to play, and black is in Zugzwang. So if the king moves back here, or f7, the king just steps into f5 and takes the pawn. Easy win. So king g6 is really the only move to prevent the white king entering on f5. But now comes the breakthrough. c5. Obviously, if the B pawn takes, then that one just goes through. So D takes is forced. D6. So the king has to step back to stop the pawn. Now, if the pawn advances, then the king just collects it. So it's, it's very important the king steps in. So the king is going to, to enter here or here. The king comes back. King C6. So now white has a threat to play king c7 and make a queen. So king d8 is forced. And now is the point of no return. King takes b6. That allows this pawn to advance. Of course, you have to calculate this out beforehand to check it's winning, but it is winning for white. King takes, threatening to come in to take the pawn, so the pawn has to advance. b6. Now, if king c8 tried to stop that, then you can see that one of those pawns is going through, and that's actually checkmate. So c2, b7, queen, check. And now, to keep things really simple, the easiest is just to force an exchange of queens here. And, of course, that one is very simple because white king just travels across here to take the pawn and game over. So, coming back to this position, the key move is king e3. By the way, a move like, let's say, king g6, king e4, king f6, g4. 
forces that same position. So this is Tsugtang, black has to give ground, and as we've seen, king g6, c5 is actually winning for white. So uh, in this position, yeah, g4 by Aronian was a mistake, and he only drew the game. Right, so that was played on... Um, when was that played? 6th of August, yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Now, let's look at this game played in round three of the Sinkfield Cup. Maxime vachet le -Grave against Sam Shankland. I'll go through the whole game. I mean, I, I don't want to dwell too long on the first moves. I really want to cut straight to the end game. I know many of you like to see the complete game. Fair enough. I shall zip through fairly quickly, with, uh, but with yeah, minimal explanation. But it's a Gioco Piano. That much we know. This actually very tense opening that kind of defers the struggle to later on in the game. Bishop b6, very logical to challenge this strong bishop. Uh, Maxime exchanges and plays the knight to f1. And, um, well, if black wants to play in a more conventional way, then, of course, you can just castle here. And that's reasonable. I mean, I slightly prefer white in this position. You have a chance maybe to play d4 later on. But it's very reasonable for black. But a5 played by Sam Shankland. Sam is a really hard worker. He prepares incredibly well. And when I look to this position using computer, then a5 is the recommendation of Stockfish. I have no doubt that Sam was using his preparation. So, simple idea, it stops white expanding on the queen side gaining space. Knight g3, of course you can still castle here, king side, but Sam clearly has the idea to go queen side, and this is getting really sharp. Uh, very interesting position, g5. So we have really double-edged position on the board. And I think this is reasonable. I mean, it looks crazy to castle queenside with the pawn on a5. Um, b4 could break open lines, but actually, well, black has counterplay on the king side, and black is pretty solid on the queen side. Here, uh, Sam played knight e7. I mean, knight b8 looks very reasonable to me. It reminds me of, of that dilemma in the, um, the Sveshnikov with this line where white plays the knight to d5 and this after the exchange the pawn threatens the knight and black has a choice whether to go to b8 or e7. b8 positionally feels right because the knight has control or has some control over c5. Uh, but knight e7 played also very reasonable. Um, it, it turns out pretty well. It's just a very double-edged position. Knight g4, and this is this is a very interesting idea. Um, instead of a more conventional move like rook e2 or maybe rook e1, uh, Maxime plays the rook over to the queen side. Incredible. Rook b5. So, I mean, this rook could just end up, you know, up, up a blind alley here, just doing nothing. Um, just a dead-end street. But if he has time to get in b4 and a5 then it could just be checkmate. So basically, black needs to react really quickly here. And Sam did that by taking on f2 and playing g4. So clearly, black is going to recover the piece because of a pin, pin and win. Well, pin and equalize here in this case. Um, so, I mean, that could be very dangerous to damage white's pawns. So knight takes e5, just a, a little little trade which um, gets white out of trouble. So if pawn takes knight, material is even, but queen e2 looks really nice for white. Obviously this pawn weak, uh, c5 potentially, or b4, b4 coming. So here come the tactics. Queen takes rook, all very interesting. So pawn takes, rook takes, and after that little flurry, the material is still even. Um, 
it feels like the position is a little bit better for white because black's pawns are just a little bit ragged but actually black should be fine here with care black gets counterplay on the f file and white challenges with the rook rook exchange still feels better for white but actually black has enough here basically if the king steps forward to e4 then that check is annoying so you know hits hits this pawn so you can see that well white has to sidestep here and basically black is all right here with care and the simplest way to go here is to play king d6 after the check the king steps back again the problem is white needs both the king and the knight on the e4 square uh, to make progress it's not possible but Shankland plays knight d6, a very plausible move. Looks very nice, complementing this pawn. So the pawn controls these squares, the knight controls these squares. But he had misjudged the pawn endgame. He needs to step back with the knight, which isn't very pleasant, but it's tenable. And instead, he played king e7. And knight takes knight. Well, he played pawn takes. Let's have a quick look at king takes. After this move b3, this basically puts black into Zugzwang. If the king comes forward, king e4, if the king goes back to defend the pawn, then basically black runs out of moves. You know, one of these is going to be taken. So king b4, and here's the point. King f5 threatens to take that pawn. You could take that pawn, but you've got to watch out for a check here. So king f5 is the most accurate. And the point is this, after king takes b3, c5 forces one of the pawns through and we even get a check on the king there and that really is decisive so basically king takes loses fairly simply so pawn takes this is the game continuation king e4 threatening king f5 to take the pawn and now i mean the similarities with eronian against lay are obvious um very very similar pawn structure except this time shankton has a pawn on e5, um, but actually it doesn't make any difference. b3, and this puts black into Zugzwang. The king has to cover the f5 square. If the king goes back, then king f5 comes in. You can play h5, but it doesn't make any difference. The king still has to make a decision here. So in this position, Shanklin played king g6, maintaining control over the f5 square, and here is where the breakthrough comes. I mean, it is uncanny how similar this is to the Aronian lay game c5 so if the b pawn takes then white's b pawn goes through so d takes as now d6 threatening to make a queen so the king has to come back king d5 threatening to support the pawn so for example if king e8 king c6 threatening king c7 and d7 King here, king takes pawn with those same two b and d pawns. Uh, let's say, um, well, e4, then the king comes here and it's, it's going to be mate. Or a4. Now, this is interesting because actually, once again, uh, at the end of this, there's a queen exchange. Forces the queen exchange and that wins the day, c7 and in so after king d5 king d5 just played e4 now if the king takes then it is black who wins but this was calculated of course very well by uh, vashirikov king c6 e3 d7 so the d pawn is going through if king e7 then king c7 of course and queens we check e2 d8 e1 king takes so we have a queen and pawn endgame but basically it's the quality of the pass pawn that is so important here the b pawn is just going to go through so threatening to, to queen the b pawn c4 takes trying to get some counterplay but it's uh, to no avail here and key move after the check, queen a5, that is the end of the game. The white queen prevents 
This one from Queening and, well, threatens to take the pawn actually, and also to get a second queen as well. So here, well, black resign, there really is no defense. A very, very interesting pawn end game, and, well, I hope you appreciate the subtleties in and, and the, the difference between, um, and the similarities between this one and the Aronian lay game as well. Seamfield Cup, really exciting. Uh, there are now three players in the lead after three rounds. Caruana, So and Vashir Lagrave, all with two and a half out of three.